Hello everybody, welcome to another Halu Caesar review. Today I'm reviewing Tragedy Looper, New Tragedies. This is a game published by WizKids. And uh, as it says here, it is a cooperative time looping game. Uh, with that being said, two to four players, there, one of the players will play the mastermind and the other are protagonists trying to prevent those tragedies from happening. So you can play this great two players, uh, but you can also uh, play with three protagonists working together against one mastermind. Age recommendation on this is 14 and up, and I think that might be pretty accurate. I think depending on you know experience with more complex games, because that being said, this is a fairly complex deduction uh kind of mystery game and it's it can be fairly uh complex in uh your actions that you need to take and the thought process behind those there is also some content in here not like real explicit or anything like that but you know you are dealing with murders and serial killers and suicides and and things like that so just uh kind of an upfront uh disclaimer there uh says so about two hours to play and i think that's pretty accurate for the 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 kind of uh normal game uh there the game does include i'll show you some kind of first time uh first time uh, I'm trying to remember what they call the first time uh, scenarios, if you will. And uh, those are a little bit easier, a little uh, less complex than some of the, the, the basic ones, just to kind of help the players ease into the game. That being said, there is a lot to this game. So let's go ahead and open the box and talk about the quality of the components before we talk about the actual gameplay of the game. The other thing I do want to say up front is there is there's a, been a bunch of other tragedy looper games, so this is not a new concept and from but it is new to me. Uh, so I have never played any of the previous tragedy looper games. So you know if you're a tragedy looper fan and you love the games and you're looking to get into this one. I'll go, I will give you, you know, my thoughts on this and, and show you the components and everything. But this review is from a perspective of I have never played a Tragedy Looper game prior to this one. And but I think, you know, let's get into the components right now with the, the rule books. So there are there is a master mind handbook, which should only be read and looked at by the mastermind itself. Uh, themselves and uh, so I won't thumb through the whole thing but there is a teaching guide which I thought was very nice here in the front and it kind of runs through just an example play uh, that you can like example day of the game that you can as a mastermind walk the people through so they get familiar with what the actions are you know what uh you know, how the cards are played out when they're revealed, what happens, and get you some of the basics there. So I thought that was a, a neat thing they did with the, the Mastermind Handbook. They also have in the very back, uh, very back, they have some guidance on uh, coming up with your own scenarios as well. Uh, so this game comes with, hold on, let me, let me go screen so I don't show you anything. No spoilers here. I was just trying to remember. There's 13. So there's 13 unique uh, scenarios in this book here. But then there's actual guidance on creating your own as well, which is really cool. So you have a lot of content in it. This The rule book, I think, does a great job. Again, it has a lot of uh, concepts here. And the, the basic gameplay can be pretty straightforward. But there is a lot of trying to understand this game and wrap your head around it because uh, it's not your kind of average everyday uh, social deduction type game. It is 
on a whole nother level, but it is really pretty cool. So a uh, great job with the, the instructions here. Uh, I didn't have to look anything up on board game geek or anything like that. I felt like it explained it well, especially, uh, I mean, I'm a newcomer, right? So to the tragedy looper type game. So rule book, I think they, they did a good job. There are player uh, references and guides, which these are very, very vital for the game. Uh, basically, in short, what you are trying to do is the mastermind, uh, each of the different scenarios has a certain number of days to be played, which are basically equates to rounds or like turns, and a certain number of loops. Basically, you can, if you fail the one loop, you can think of it kind of as a timeline, then you're going to be able to play the loop again, start over. And there are, in some of the scenarios here, certain incidents that will happen on certain days, a uh, certain day uh, or days if there's multiple as you go through that scenario. And you just are trying to learn and manipulate the characters on the, the board, move them into certain locations, trying to protect them or put goodwill tokens on them so you can use abilities. You are trying to figure out uh, a few things. So this first steps is for your beginner scenarios. And so they are trying to figure out, there's three main plots listed here. And in the in any given beginner scenario, you have one, one of these main plots in that is happening. The protagonist doesn't know what it is uh, and one subplot as well. And so as it goes on, there's different rule roles associated with these plots. So the, the characters, if this role, if this plot is happening, these roles will be active in that scenario. The brain, key person and a murderer uh, and an unsettling rumor. You can see all of these have the conspiracy, conspiracy theorist, but this one only has the conspiracy theorist, whereas these other ones have some different roles associated with that. And so as the game goes on, you are trying to, trying to figure out as a protagonist who these different roles are assigned to, who are the characters who are these roles. And as you figure out who those roles are, you can figure out what subplot and what main plots are active. Or as you figure out what plots are active from perhaps, uh, uh, you know, verifying or trying to, you know, a very good guess of why the, the you uh, lost that loop, you could figure out what plot possibly and then from that, figure out what roles are active. And then you got to figure out what characters are. There's also incidents that happen throughout that. And that also helps give you maybe some more information on all of those things. But that's just the beginner one. On the reverse side of these uh, references, you'll actually have the basic tragedies. And so in this, there are five different main plots that could be happen, uh, happening or active. Uh, and in those, you usually have one main plot and two subplots. And so we have more, even more roles, more uh, incidents and things that are possible. But these are kind of your bread and butter. Uh, they are uh, printed on a nice thick cardstock uh, and good quality. Uh, some of the readability on the below, I, it's a little dark, but you know, it's, I, I like the readability where it's a little bit lighter up here, but it's really not too bad. It, it may be a bit small for some folks, uh, but yeah, I think the, these, these guides are really important for those protagonists to try to deduct what is going on. So I think, I think those are very, very helpful. It would be kind of nice, I thought, if this was like more of a whiteboard, uh, like a dry erase type boards that with some spaces, like maybe even, I mean, you can't really make them any larger. <laughs> they fit in a box like that. 
But that was the one comment uh, or thought I had was, man, it would be really nice if this was dry erase and the protagonist could, you know, put marker and stuff on this and and uh, keep notes and stuff on the board itself. I thought that would, would be nice. Uh, but they're just a, a cardboard uh, material. Okay, let's get to the player board. We pull this out. This is basically a it keeps track of location, which is which is very important. Those during the game, you're going to be putting tokens on characters and locations to trigger certain different events that happen. Uh, I, I think the board works great. Uh, the, I feel like I almost would like a little more room to put some of the character cards as, as you're playing with the different characters and putting them out here, you have different cards that you're playing on them. It works and it, it's functional. Uh, I do wish it was maybe a little bit bigger, but there's also some references here. Uh, and area where you can keep kind of the uh, intrigue tokens that go on to the locations. These have pictures of all the different characters that can be in this location. And there's uh, certain characters have restrictions. Uh, I believe if I'm remembering correctly, for example, like the office worker uh, from the city cannot go to the school. Uh, that is a location that cannot be. And there's, you know, vice versa. There's some other elements with that so but most of the 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 gameplay is happening right here with different character cards that are going to be out here and uh as those different character cards come out we'll show you what those look like uh as far as the card quality here uh they're you know normal type cards there's no like linen finish or anything like that um but, you know, they're, they're a, a basic, uh, okay quality, I would say, right? They're not, like, amazing, but they're also not bad. Uh, the artwork on them, you know, is, is good. You have the characters there. You have iconography here, again, of their starting location. And for any of those that uh, can... So this uh, young girl, she can only be... Uh, she starts at the school, and that's the only place place she can be. She can't go to any of the other locations. Uh, so I think they did a great job with that. The other vital thing here is this unease tokens, which can trigger different incidents and things to happen. There are some unique ones. We have a black cat. There's this holy tree uh, that is at the shrine area here. And yeah, there's different passive abilities or different uh, abilities that the protagonists need to get certain goodwill tokens. If they have that number or greater, they're able to utilize these different abilities. And those different abilities can help uh, identify different roles in the scenarios as they're trying to figure out uh, how to make it so that these tragedies stop happening. Uh, so we have a fairly big character deck and those characters will come out based on the different scenarios that are are being played so show you here this is the uh, protagonist uh, script card for the beginner scenario there is no really spoiler alert here uh, because this is open knowledge to everybody playing during your very first scenario I was just going to show you, so this one, first steps, and it sets three different loops and uh, three days per loop. And you'll notice here that on day three, uh, a suicide is uh, an incident that could happen if the certain uh, triggers are met for that. And so each of the script cards have, uh, for the 13 different scripts, there's a script card for the protagonist, there's also a script card for the mastermind. There's also cards here, decks of cards for the uh, mastermind, for them to manipulate characters, move them around, give intrigue tokens, unease tokens. Uh, the protagonists each have their own deck 
of cards that they're going to play to help kind of manipulate things and try to figure stuff out or protect certain characters, uh, keep certain events from happening. Uh, and there are three different decks. They're all the same for the protagonist. Uh, and depending on your player count, it kind of changes. So in a two-player game, the the uh, protagonist actually plays one card from each of the three decks. Uh, and so there was, there's always going to be the mastermind playing three cards out and the protagonists combined putting three cards out. Uh, and the rule book does a great job explaining kind of how that, how that happens and how that's handled. Uh, and we have lots and lots of tokens here. So they're good quality, nice thick cardboard tokens. Uh, they very easily see what they are. They also have some combined ones as some characters may get more and more tokens to help keep the, the board clean. You can swap those out for some of these uh, other tokens that count as uh, three. So we got all that. Uh, and yeah, everything fits in the box uh, really well. I meant to get these in some plastic bags to help keep them separate a little bit more, but I have all the cards in there, all the tokens there, board and everything fill, fits nicely into that. So I kind of gave you a little bit on that gameplay and, you know, I don't, you know, I'm not going to go into any spoilers or anything, but uh, the other part of this board is the tracker here. So there's some extra gauges that may be uh, in certain scenarios, but generally you have the days that you are keeping track of with one of these uh, tokens, uh, what day you're on. The incident, you go ahead and put an incident token on the day to help remind you that it could happen. Uh, and then loops. And... You know, the beginner scenarios, you just play through, and if the protagonist can keep from losing in a loop, they win. Uh, the, 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 uh, my, the, what I lost, what do they call it? The mastermind, there we go. The mastermind will win in those beginner scenarios if they lose all of those loops, those uh, chances that they have. In the more advanced, or as they call it, the basic tragedy set here, uh, with all of those, you will actually have a certain number of loops, but then you will also have kind of a final guess. So even if you failed all of the loops, if the protagonist can still identify all the character roles that are active and say, this person's the brain, this person's the key person, this person's just a person, doesn't have a role. This person, uh, you know, is the, what's another, a serial killer, whatever it is, um, they can still win at that point. The beginner ones don't have that final guess because they're a little bit more uh, simplified down, so. But there's a nice little turn summary uh, reminder here, which is nice. And yeah, that's that's basic gameplay. Again, not showing you like that go going through around itself, um, which again, I stated the rule book actually does a fairly good job at doing that here at the beginning of the mastermind book. They kind of have this walk through with images uh, that show before and after states and discusses abilities and uh, all of the different things you need uh, to know how to play the game. Uh, so this is really, really a cool idea. And, uh, you know, that this idea that you have kind of these time travelers and they're traveling back in time, trying to stop these uh, incidents, these terrible things from happening. And you have a mastermind who is manipulating things, trying to ensure that they do happen each and every time. And uh, honestly, as I played through, I was like, oh man, this, you know, is kind of a brain burner. You know, it it's a lot for the mastermind because they need to kind of understand all the different roles, right? And the scenario, how they can win. Usually there's going to be multiple ways that you can help trigger a loss for the protagonist. But, 
you there's different ways to do it, right? You don't want to be too obvious in how you trigger a loss because as you trigger a loss and it's very blatant, you know, very obvious that that's the way that they've lost, then they know how to at least stop that one from happening. Yes, you may have some other things, but you want to as the mastermind, you're in a your challenge is to ensure that these Bad things continue to happen, but to keep the protagonist guessing of like, wait, what just happened? Why did this happen? Uh, again, the knowledge on this is very important because of the different abilities and effects of the incidents and, and the plot rules. Uh, there's a lot to kind of check and keep track of as a protagonist as well. And so... But it's it's really cool because it's not just your hey move around the board, deduct you know what three cards are out of the game right we're thinking like clues very basic deduction type reasoning game this has a lot to it because you are worried that you're you have characters and you can handle the characters you can kill off characters given certain circumstances. The different abilities on the characters uh, give you all sorts of different options of manipulating tokens on the board. Uh, and there are some very powerful ones that you can only do once per loop. And it would take quite a few goodwill tokens. But if you're able to, you could reveal the role of any character in this location if you're able to do that. Uh, the pop idol... For example, you can remove an unease from any other character in the location. Uh, very helpful for those protagonists to try to keep the unease off of these characters as that can help trigger certain incidents uh, and things like that. Uh, but you can add one goodwill on any other character. So there's some really cool things. And so remove one unease. There's some really cool things associated with these uh, and, uh, it, I'm, I'm just really impressed with it. And I, I think, you know, you get the right group together that gets more comfortable with the roles and how it works. You can have a lot of fun with this game. I think for those that may struggle to get into new games, uh, this, this is a little bit more on the complex side of, you know, trying to understand, there's a and that deductive that deductive reasoning is is uh you have lots going on uh and so but it's really cool it's very puzzly uh as far as that goes there's you know as the mastermind you're trying to get certain tokens on characters trying to get them in certain locations and uh you know you could kill off characters but you know making it so that the protagonist can't use those abilities but in doing so, you might give them a little bit more information uh, than you like. But you have to ensure that they lose every loop. And so it's it's very, very cool. Uh, and I am i haven't, you know, created my own scenarios or anything like that. They're just kind of these basic ones. But there's a lot of potential uh, in this game. I think it's really, really cool. I can see why there has been so many different kind of versions or scenarios that have been published for it but i'm i'm very impressed uh with uh tragedy looper new tragedy so if that looks like a game that the interest to you go ahead and check it out if you've liked this review please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and uh, we hope to have you come back for more reviews and uh, but yeah tragedy looper it's a really brain burner uh deduction reasoning game very very cool uh, and that is how Lou sees it